Healthcare Money Campfire Stories by Eric Bricker, MD. Chapter 15. Paid for Compass for the Next 50 Years. I entered the elevator on the first floor of a nondescript 12 story office building in a fancy part of the city. I pushed the 12 button in the elevator. The top floor was the quote unquote family office of one of the oldest and wealthiest families in the city. The family office was a Compass client. Before this group was one of our clients, I had no idea what a family office was. Some sort of company that made custom offices in people's houses, I incorrectly thought. A family office is where rich people put their money in assets so that when they die, they can keep it in the family. This family office was also the holding company of multiple large businesses. The offices were nice, but not extravagant. Everything was white. Many of the rooms had glass walls so you could look across most of the floor from office to office. I checked in with the receptionist. I was led through a maze of glass walls and hallways to one of the meeting rooms in the middle of all the glass. In the room were two insurance brokers for the family office. Soon after I walked in, the VP of HR and Director of Benefits walked in as well. The purpose of the meeting was to review their group's utilization of the Compass service during the previous year and talk about Compass features for the coming year. I had brought utilization reports to discuss and a presentation of what was new at Compass. The family office holding company had about 50 employees and the plan was to try the Compass service out with this group before introducing it to the larger companies that the holding company owned. Over the course of the meeting, we reviewed the case of one employee who needed to have prostate surgery. His urologist had initially scheduled the employee's surgery at Oak Tree Medical Center. As he had known from working with Compass for other healthcare services, he wanted to see a review of the hospital's quality and price information. He had a consumer-directed health plan with a high deductible. His company put a large sum of money in the employee's health savings account for everyone for every year to pay for deductible expenses. He contacted his Compass Health Pro. Compass was very familiar with Oak Tree Medical Center. It was a new hospital in the area that was out of network with all insurance carriers. It did not even take any Medicare patients. However, the surgeons that operated there were in network with most insurance carriers. The surgeons at Oak Tree also operated at other hospitals, including one just five miles down the highway. As a result of being out of network, Oak Tree's prices were very high. They performed orthopedic, urologic, gynecologic, and bariatric weight loss surgery for tens of thousands or even over $100,000 more than other in-network hospitals. The doctors would tell the patients that they themselves were in-network and would be able to see them for their pre-operative evaluations. However, when it came time for surgery, the surgeon would schedule them at the out-of-network Oak Tree Medical Center. This arrangement is expensive for patients and their employer-sponsored insurance plan. Most people have separate in-network and out-of-network deductibles on their health insurance plans. Even if the patient had reached their deductible as part of their preoperative visits, scans, and tests, they would have to start from zero for the hospital cost for the surgery because they had not many of the, met any of their separate out-of-network deductible yet. This employee's prostate surgery was going to cost about $75,000 at Oak Tree. That exact same surgery with the exact same surgeon at the in-network hospital just five miles down the road would cost only $25,000. Given that the less expensive hospital was also in-network, it would result in a dramatically less overall out-of-pocket cost for him as well, to the tune of thousands of dollars. His Compass Health Pro notified him of the price difference and asked if he wanted Compass to look into other hospital options for him with the same urologist. As one could imagine, he was interested. Compass contacted the urologist's office and after speaking with the office manager and the urologist nurse, the employee's surgery was rescheduled for a different day at the $25,000 in-network hospital down the road. The employee had the surgery done and recovered well without incident. As it was later revealed in a law enforcement investigation and in the local newspaper, 
Otri Medical Center was incentivizing surgeons to perform operations at their expensive out-of-network hospital by paying for marketing, such as billboards and advertisements, for the surgeons, and even paying salaries of employees that worked in the surgeons' offices. These perks were essentially kickbacks, and it is against the law for hospitals to provide kickbacks to doctors for referring patients to their facility. As a result, one or several of the administrators for Oak Tree Medical Center ended up in prison and the hospital closed. This bait-and-switch approach with an in-network doctor and an out-of-network facility was well known by Compass. Compass had also seen this approach used at other hospitals, ambulatory surgery centers, and endoscopy centers across the country. This scam would result in $20,000 out-of-network colonoscopies performed by in-network gastroenterologists. Typically, the facility charge for an in-network colonoscopy is only $800 to $1,200. As we concluded discussing this employee's experience with Compass, the VP of HR said that she had talked about this same story with the group's CFO, who then replied, With what we saved, we just paid for Compass for the next 50 years. We all laughed. Sadly, scams and complicity of doctors in those scams are not funny at all. Lesson learned. Caveat emptor. Buyer beware. That saying holds true in most consumer situations, and to a certain extent, that is to be expected. However, healthcare is unique in that it is often an infrequent service at a stressful time that is filled with fear and uncertainty. Add to this mix a doctor who has superior knowledge and is providing guidance. Most people have learned to trust doctors since they were children. Those factors create a perfect storm for potential abuse and exploitation.